Brought to you by Prescient Investment Management. Informed by science. Guided by insight. Prescient Investment Management is an authorized FSP. Welcome to the Honest Money Show. It's a solo show with me. We're talking about financial freedom or retirement planning. I, I tend to talk about financial freedom instead of retirement planning because for for the, those of us who are younger, we're going to look at retirement as kind of two or three lifetimes away and just, you know, it just doesn't seem like a real concept. Whereas financial freedom is something that I think that we tend to work on and aim for much closer and much earlier in life. And and I, I think I need to start by saying Financial freedom is not the same as being wealthy. It's not, you know, you're not aiming to be the next Bill Gates or the next Mark Zuckerberg or whoever it is, you know, you're aiming to get to the point where you can live off your money and you can make the decisions you want to make. You might end up becoming wealthy one day and that's, that's great, but, but becoming truly wealthy, becoming one of the world's wealthiest people, I'm convinced takes a lot of hard work, a lot of skill, a lot of expertise and a lot of luck. And when you talk to the world's wealthiest investors, they'll always tell you, the successful ones will always tell you they were very lucky as well as working hard, as well as having a lot of skill. So, so I don't really want to rely on luck to get to, to something which I can control and that that's financial freedom. So, so what is financial freedom? I I think financial freedom has three steps. Step one is you've got to get to the point where you are debt free, where, where you owe no money on credit cards, personal loans, overdrafts home loans, anything. You don't owe a cent to anybody. And, and I think for most people in the world, especially you know, kind of salary earners, they don't get to, to, to debt free and, until very late in their 40s or 50s. And, and lots of people will get to retirement and still have some debt. And, and that means they're not financially free because they owe the bank. So w- whether you've got lots of assets and, and you're earning a big salary doesn't matter if you owe the bank money. What you need to know is you're actually working for the bank. You're you're going out there to earn a salary, to pay off the debts, and then hopefully try to save and put your kids through school and do all the other things you want to do. But until you're debt-free and you're using all your money to grow your own assets and generate income for yourself, part of what you're doing is working for the shareholders of the banks. And so you're not financially free. So so I think step one, you've got to be debt-free. Step two, you, you've, you've got to get to the point where you can build up an emergency fund, which covers three to six months worth of your expenses. What, what is that? So let, let's just say you're spending, you know, 20,000 Rand a month. Then at the very least, you need three times 20,000. So you need 60,000 Rand sitting in a money market account or something linked to your banking profile. And it's money that you can use and access in the event that something horrible goes wrong that you didn't plan for, something that you didn't anticipate. And, and it, what it does is it helps you not access debt at, at the worst possible moment or have to sell an investment when you actually need to access money. So, so your emergency fund is not your holiday fund. It's not your next car fund. It's not the handbag fund or the shoe fund or the fancy phone fund. It's there to cover expenses that you just simply cannot anticipate. And if you think that doesn't happen, can I remind you about COVID? Can I remind you about where people got sent home for three months and just had no way of, of earning an income? You know, people sitting, you know, selling hours or doing gigs or whatever it is, m- might have just been sitting at home, absolutely desperate to, to kind of earn anything and access money in any way possible because they didn't even have enough money to buy food. That's what an emergency fund is for. You can choose. You can decide that you only want three months if your earnings are generally quite stable. So if, you, you know, if you've got some assets or you own your own company and the business goes relatively well, or you earn a you know, stable salary. But if you've got your kind of a volatile income, you know, let's just say you sell hours or you work part-time in lots of places, then you might want to increase that emergency fund to around about six months worth of your expenses. I tend to prefer six months of expenses, but, but the choice is, is yours. That, that's step two of financial freedom. The, the last step is then building up your investment assets. So these are investments. They're not, it's not the home you live in, even if that home is paid off. We're talking about assets that are going to generate you an income that can cover your expenses. And that's the last step to, to financial freedom. Typically, if you want to know how, how much you need in investment assets to cover, cover your lifestyle, what's your financial freedom number? You can take all of your expenses, what you generally will spend in a year. Now, just remember that's your transportation, 
it's where you live, it's your, what, where you eat, it's where you go on holiday, education, all of those things. And you take all of that and over a year, you, you, you work out what it is. So if it costs you, you know, a million rand in a year to run your entire life, then, then that million rand, you need to multiply by 25. In other words, if you're going to spend a million rand in a normal year of life, you need 25 million rands worth of investment assets. So whatever that number is for you, you can work it out. And it's not, it's not that I need to, I'm, I'm the one telling you you need 25 million rand. You work out what your expenses are, multiply those by, by 25, and that's your financial freedom number. The very important thing about your financial freedom number is you decide how, how big that number needs to be. You know, if you spend a lot, you're going to need a big number. If you don't spend that much and you're very kind of cautious and conservative with your, with your expenses, your, your financial freedom number might only be, you know, two or three or four million rand. And it doesn't mean that you need to live like a hermit and, and you know, kind of spend no money, but it just gives you the ability to control how you spend and how much you need. And, and I think it's one of the big mistakes that sal salary earners make, you know, especially those that earn big salaries. In the early days of life, they start out and they start earning a bit of money. And every time they get an increase, they spend more. And, and all of a sudden, one day they wake up and they're spending, you know, millions and millions because they're earning millions and millions. And they realize that they can never stop work because they, they spend so much money that their financial freedom number is just far too big. And I think that that's one of the keys to financial freedom is as your income rises, as you earn more money, don't let your expenses accelerate at the same rate. Control those expenses and make sure that they're, you know, they can accelerate. You can improve your lifestyle, but don't let your lifestyle improve as fast as your, your, your income is, is growing. That's the only way I think that you can get to financial freedom very quickly. And you know, if you talk to someone who's 25 years old and you say, you know, when would you like to get to financial freedom? Most of them would say kind of 40 or 45 years old. And, and, you know, it's possible, but a lot of people don't achieve it because they don't control their expenses. They allow the expenses to just get far too big. And, and that's really what controls them. So they're not controlling their money. Their money is controlling them. And it's usually about expenses. You know, when I look at, at the way generally people spend effort, they spend a lot of effort on the things that they buy. You know, they spend a lot of time researching what cars, phones, holidays, all of that. They do a lot of work on that. They don't spend a lot of time on understanding what the expenses are, understanding how they spend, understanding where they can save. They don't even spend that much time on, on thinking about what's really important to them. They, they just kind of follow the same pattern they've been following, what all their friends and family are doing, and they just do that. And, and I think that that's maybe the other key with, with money is you need to be really intentional about the way you control your money. You need to decide what's important to you and then make those decisions. You need to decide that actually what you want to do with your money is go on holiday, as an example. And actually spending lots of money on restaurants is something that you do just because that's what everyone's doing. It's not really meaningful to you. If that's the case, stop spending money on restaurants and save the money to go on holiday, but make sure you're saving other money for your investments, for your financial freedom number. Don't just keep doing the kind of same old stuff that everyone else is doing. There's a reason that only five out of every hundred salary earners are able to get to financial freedom. Just, just let me repeat that. We've got about more than a third of our country is unemployed. Add, add then all the salary earners and only five out of a hundred of all of those people are able to retire or get to financial freedom successfully. And, and that's not because they're stupid. It's not because they're not earning good money. It's not because they don't have education. It's because they're allowing their money to control them. And I know you might be sitting there with this kind of an issue for yourself and you're saying, yeah, but you know, I've got black tax or I've got, you know, I've got big problems. I've had bad luck income through COVID or whatever the deal is. And, and I'm not saying that those aren't real issues. What I'm saying is you need to control your money. You need to take steps to be the one that decides how your money gets used. If you do that, then you can get to financial freedom, despite all the issues we all have with our money, despite all the reasons we have not to save and not to invest. We can't give ourselves excuses. What we've got to do is find reasons why. Why can I save? What's important to me? What is the thing that will make me stop spending money on extra coffees or you know, overbuying, overpaying on cars or whatever it is? You, you know, the bad behaviors are, 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 are really destructive to us when it comes to money. And the issue I find is most people can't find a strong enough reason to make the trade-off. They can't find a strong enough reason to stop spending, so they just carry on. And, and you know, they want to get to financial freedom, but actually they don't want that as much as they want that, that next new jacket or that next new phone or whatever it is. And, and I think those are the important things is 
You've got to find out for yourself. You've got to decide for yourself what's important. What is it that you really want? And if it's to spend more money and to have a kind of a bigger lifestyle and impress your friends and family with the way, the way that you live, that's fine. That's a decision you're making. And then you know financial freedom is not for you. What, what you're going to do is you're going to work until you're 65 and probably carry on working thereafter. And no one needs to judge you for that. That's a decision you make. But if you desperately want to get to financial freedom and you, you want to be the boss of you, you want to decide your own destiny, then stop doing what everyone else is doing and start to take control of your money. And I think that that's a, kind of the biggest lesson I've learned over my time is that the moment you exert control over your money, the moment you exert control over the way, especially the way you spend, it doesn't mean you stop spending. You're just much more intentional about it and you make proper decisions about how you spend, how you earn, where you earn. And the more control you exert over your money, the more control you have over life. And it's amazing how quickly things change. It's amazing how quickly your career gets better, how much more you kind of relaxed, how much better your relationships are, because actually life is much less stressful. I'm not saying it's stress-free, but you know, we, we can't live in South Africa or anywhere in the world right now and be stress-free, but, but we don't have to add to that stress with lack of financial control and, and, and lack of control of our money. So that's kind of my pep talk for today. I hope you, I hope it mean it means something to you. I hope you find that reason that kind of motivates you to get to financial freedom and and kind of stop looking around and stop worrying about what everyone else is doing. You know, just exert control over your life and do do what's important for you and help the people that are that are meaningful to you and and look after your family and and your friends. But but don't try and impress people. You know that's not the way to to kind of get to financial freedom. Brought to you by Prescient Investment Management. Informed by science, guided by insight. Prescient Investment Management is an authorized FSP.